part, you're going to be, you know, you're the kind of people that we want to reach with these socks. Um, I mean, we certainly want to reach the public as well. But, uh, you know, people that have that expertise, I think, can really contribute to this next step. So again, my name's uh, Will Johnson. I'm with the uh, uh, U.S. Department of the Interior. I'm based in Anchorage. I've been in Alaska for about uh, 20 years, um, most of the time with Fish and Wildlife Service, but I've been with DOI for the last uh, two and a half, three years. And we're going to talk about a uh, dispersing use um, avoidance area technical, technical committee. And so this is going to be talking about the process of, you know, we've, we've heard about the science, we've heard about the policy, you know, what comes next, and, and how does the uh, public comment period fit into the, to this entire process. So um, this is going to be a phased approach. So right now we're uh, through, I think it's January 9th, is it? That we're going to be accepting public comments. And, uh, and so then this technical committee is going to, and I'll kind of describe the, the composition of that group in a, in a minute here. Uh, we've been tasked with reviewing and considering the input that uh, comes in from the public. And then we're being tasked with providing uh, advice on avoidance areas to the on-scene coordinators. So, you know, people like uh, Captain Albertson and um, uh, Mr. Merrill there, um, they will be the ones that will, and also the uh, on-scene coordinator for the EPA would be, you know, probably the other decision maker, you know, those, those three agencies are, are the people that sign the sub-area plans. So these, these would, as, as uh, was mentioned earlier, the, yeah, these would actually be adopted into the sub-area plans like the one for the, the Aleutians or Bristol Bay. And so there's again a map of, the, of what those sub-areas look like that are under consideration for the pre-authorization process. So who's going to be on this technical committee? So it will be um, scientists with a variety of agencies. Um, Department of the Interior, that will be myself. Uh, we have, we'll have biologists from the Fish and Wildlife Service and toxicologists. Uh, U.S. Geological Survey, um, they're going to be able to bring some information to, to bear. Um, I think national, uh, for NOAA, we're going to have, um, you know, probably a, a number of different uh, scientists contributing to that. We have people that know about essential fish habitat, sustainable fisheries, um, uh, the natural resource damage assessment process. There's a, you know, some good toxicologists that work in that group. So I think, you know, the idea is to draw it's not just like maybe one person from each of these agencies that potentially could contribute to this, to this team. I think it's going to be, you know, trying to, try to get as much expertise in the room and, and data sets that can help inform this, this uh, process. Um, and the last department of fishing game, uh, for the fishing game people in the room, the uh, contact, that the, the primary contact we'll have is uh, Jeanette Alice, who's in, based in, in Anchorage. And so, um, you know, we'll be working with her, but I think she'll again be reaching out to the fishing game folks that within the, the, this whole entire area to see what data sets are available. And then uh, Department of Environmental Conservation, I think we'll probably have uh, Dr. Bernhardt as part of this group, and and uh, not sure if there'll be uh, anyone else. So so again, we try to draw on the, you know, this is really where we bring the science piece into it. So how does is this how is this process going to unfold? Or, um, so we're going to conduct this. We're going to envision this kind of kind of working through each of these sub areas sequentially. I'm not sure which one we're going to start with. Um, we would be reviewing and evaluating the uh, information that comes in from the public or from you know um, any any agency scientists, travel scientists, etc. that are offering information. And uh, so we've kind of been tasked with. Uh, Taking that information that Mr. Jeans will be uh, collating for us and, um, and reviewing that and kind of saying, well, what information do we have and then what other scientific information do we have to, that we need to build upon that, that start? So we'll be, um, and then also when we're looking at that, we'll be kind of, kind of evaluating that, the information to say, well, you know, is it really useful in helping to establish a, you know, an avoidance area? And so the, and I'll get into this, I think, uh, a little bit more, um, is that, you know, is, is the information specific enough to help us make decisions? And, and ideally it will be, um, 
and make broad statements. In some cases, that might be helpful, like you know, pay attention to say the migratory behavior of the certain species. You know that they're they're highly migratory, and that that's you know an important consideration. I mean, if it's just kind of more policy statements like you know we're against all dispersing use or whatever, we can we'll certainly forward those those comments on to the to the OSCs, to the OSC coordinators for their consideration, because they need to hear you know kind of the full range of of, of uh, public comment. But for the group that, that I'm going to be working with, you know, we're kind of more tasked with kind of identifying really key areas that are important to, that really deserve a, a closer look. You know, so they're pre-authorized now, <clears throat> excuse me, and what that would do is the avoidance areas remove them from that pre-authorized condition, so they're no longer pre-authorized, and that kind of means you go through that case-by-case by case analysis. Um, so we're going to be reviewing it, information on species, habitats, uh, human use areas, you know, like what are important fishing areas, etc., cetera, um, within that pre-authorized area. And we'll make uh, recommendations, but really the, the call comes down to the OSCs, to the, to the people that sign those uh, contingency plans, and they'll have the final say. So what information can you provide? We want it to be as uh, specific as possible. Ideally, if you can draw it on a map or you know show a, show a whale migration route or you know a polygon like this is really kind of an important area for you know this particular uh, species of fish or you know we uh, this is areas that are important for subsistence uses, etc. That's really kind of that would be the the most helpful is to actually have some some way to, to kind of physically visualize this because. Really, what this is going to do is we're going to be ending up having to plot something on the map to, to show to people like Cal Captain Albertson and Mr. Merrill. Okay, these are the areas that really, you know, within that sub-area plan need to be carved out. And um, so, the more specific you can be, not just on locations, but you know, why is this important? What what's your basis for making the recommendation? Do you do you have any data sets, scientific papers? Uh, personal use of them, uh, the area, uh, personal knowledge, that sort of thing. Those are, um, that really helps us kind of evaluate, you know, how much weight to put on um, that when making these recommendations. And I think I kind of covered that last point. So some of the factors I will consider, you know, are the threatened and endangered species present? Is it critical habitat for those species? Um, are there sensitive species or life stages that would be uh, found in greater abundance in those areas compared to maybe um, other areas within the pre-authorized area? Uh, the importance for migrating species, you know, that's already come up, come up as an issue at some of these public meetings. Uh, seasonality, as uh, Dr. Bernhardt mentioned, um, you know, certain life stages of, of critters might be found in an area during certain seasons but not others, and so that really kind of gets to um, you know, their potential for being exposed to uh, dispersants. Bathymetry, are there you know certain features like upwelling areas, uh, sea mounts, pinnacles, etc. That that might provide more um, you know habitat, or you know th there might be a reason why uh, certain critters are hanging out in a certain area. You know whether it's fish or marine mammals, birds, etc. Uh, commercial fishing concentration areas and. Uh, you mentioned subsistence use areas as well. So, what we, as was alluded to earlier, I think maybe it was uh, during uh, I Matt Hobby's talk, um, we already have had that Endangered Species Act consultation. So, um, let's see if, I, if this pointer works. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> okay. Um, so, in any event, uh, so you can see some green, some green polygons here uh, that. Uh, um, some green areas that are on the on the floor on that. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is an area. These are all areas that are high concentration areas for the short-tailed albatross. So they're a flagship species. They're found. You know, uh, more broadly within the pre-authorization pre area, but those are really high concentration areas. They kind of did a statistical analysis of, of, of what were the, the, the key areas for that particular listed species. 
And then that pink polygon is the uh, North Pacific right whale critical habitat area that's been already established um, under regulation. And you can see that it overlaps a little bit with the pre-authorization area. So Mark uh, James is going to talk more, more about how you can get that information to us. So there's a website here, but he's also going to re reiterate that. And I'm showing the map here just as kind of a, again, a reminder that you know, the more specific information you have, uh, can you put it on a map? Um, can you give us a, a good sense of where these areas are? That's really going to be very helpful for us. And with that, um, take questions. So the question was, how, how often would the, these avoidance areas be revisited and uh, on kind of what type of schedule? So I think uh, Lieutenant Commander Hobby has some uh, wants to address that one. So as far as updated plans, so uh, there's a few different timelines here that are involved. So this uh, initial effort uh, is to identify avoidance areas uh, for this first time within the pre-authorization area. Uh, and we're trying to, uh, we're working to finish that by the deadline that we have, January 2018. Uh, and, but as far as planning in general, so with all those different sub-area plans, right now they're on a five-year update cycle. Now, with that five years, that's when we're doing a comprehensive review of the entire plan. Uh, but it can be updated more frequently than that. And if there is a reason to update an area uh, before that five-year cycle or whatever uh, recurring cycle we happen to have at that time, that we can do that. Um, there's a website, uh, alaskarrt.org, uh, and that is a website that hosts all of the contingency plans for Alaska. It also has information on that site on how you get in touch with planners uh, like me. Uh, and to start that conversation on how we can update the information on the plan so we have the most accurate information for responders. Can you see that website here, please? It's Alaska RRT and all one word dot org. And uh, Mr. Merrill, you have a question? No, I was just going to be responding. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, how about anybody else in the room? Uh, Chris? Did you mention that deadline for submitting uh, Yeah, so, so um, Mark will address that in more detail. Did you, uh, I saw you had a short talk with trust. Did you include the stellar sea lion? Um, what was the question again? Did you include the stellar sea lion with endangered species? So, so there, they would have been included in the. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So the question was, uh, were the stellar sea lion included in the uh, um, process, like where when, where the endangered species were identified? So a couple a couple of things. For, um, they would have been included in the analysis that the National Marine Fisheries Service did for their Endangered Species Act consultation. So they kind of consulted on not just the dispersal use plan, the new one, but on the all aspects of the what's called the unified plan. So that was one of the first slides that was, was shown was the unified plan. So that's the, that's the overarching plan and the dispersing guidelines are just one part of that. So they would have been considered by, by the National Marine Fisheries Service and any potential impacts um, within what they call the 